Nine days later, Anne sensed something was wrong. I can still see the sadness on his face. He would say, whatever happens, I love you. Never forget that. Anne had been visiting Ron in Kaikoura. On the 2nd of December, she boarded the bus back to Christchurch. And I had the surge to jump off the bus and go back and say, right, what's going on? I can still see his face now, all these years later. I'm very sad. Mm. Anne never got an explanation about what was troubling Ron. That would be the last time she saw her lover. Two days before he went missing, Ron Jorgensen was visited by a good friend, Tony Harris, at that time a well-known criminal. That evening, the two men drank together at a hotel in Kaikoura. Both Harris and the publican would later tell police Jorgensen was calm but appeared to be distracted. The following afternoon, Ron was witnessed in the company of a mysterious stranger. The next day, he was gone. We know that Jorgensen's car was deliberately pushed off the cliff. Four weeks after Ron's disappearance, a hat was washed up. This could be a clue pointing to Ron being in the car when it was pushed over. However, our analysis of the tidal flows in the bay show that an object from the accident scene would have been carried away from the location the cap was found. None of the theories of accident, suicide or murder hold up under investigation. Which leaves the strong possibility that Jorgensen organised his own disappearance. It had a strong affinity with the sea, and the night he disappeared, there was an unusual boat sighted in the Kaikoura harbour. This big yacht, about 80 to 90 feet, most probably, pulled up in the bay over here, narrowly missing one of our big sunken rocks out here, and that's what made me think, ooh, what's that doing in here? Stayed the night, and it was gone early the next morning, never to be seen again. The next day we found out that um, Ron had gone missing and I just thought, oh, maybe that's how he got out of the country, was gone on this yacht. It just seemed funny that it had pulled up that night and gone early the next morning. I knew that he'd been given special dispensation from the parole board to stay in Auckland for a few days after the talk in order to take care of some business. And when he went missing three weeks later, I always wonder whether or not the business that he stayed in Auckland to take care of was the business of uh, arranging his disappearance. I thought, aha, uh -huh, this is what's been building up. To have proper freedom. To those who knew him well, Ron's desperation to escape his parole and life in Kaikoura made the idea that he'd skipped the country highly probable. It was a time of real mixed emotions. I felt sad because I really, really did miss him. But I was also glad, quite elated really, if, if he'd got away and experienced some freedom in life. Ron would have loved to cock a snook, you know, give the fingers to the Justice Department and get out of uh, New Zealand completely. He would have loved that. There was a final clue to how Jorgensen might have bankrolled a new life elsewhere. Ron's friend, Tony Harris, told police about an illicit stash of 20 grand Ron kept in his caravan. After his disappearance, a police search found no trace of the money. He wouldn't have had any trouble at all, I don't think, in getting out of the country. And I don't think he would necessarily have had to pay a lot of money either. In fact, I know that people in the, at that time didn't have trouble getting false passports. And having got a false passport, he could easily have changed his appearance. 
He was a seaman, he knew a lot of people who worked on ships, and he knew a lot of criminals. And in the criminal world, you do those things for your mates for nothing. You never ask for money, never. On December the 19th, 1984, notorious gangster Ronald Jorgensen vanished. Officially, he was declared dead, but all the evidence suggests Ron faked his own death and absconded abroad. Two years after he went missing, there was a crucial turn of events. An old school friend reported that he'd spotted Jorgensen in Perth. So what did he do when he saw you in Australia? Fuck it off. Took off, ran away into a car park. My two daughters were wandering around behind me and I was looking for them, so the wife followed him, but he, he uh, ran away into a car park and disappeared. There were others who claimed they'd sighted Jorgensen both in Australia and back in New Zealand, but police found none of these could be substantiated and the trail went cold. On re-examination of police files, we found there was at least one other credible witness. There was the day that the casino opened, or the day after, and we were given free tickets to the free luncheon, so of course we're under that. Barry knew Jorgensen well from a Christchurch rugby club where Ron owed him $50 for a raffle. And we were standing in the queue waiting to get into the restaurant and along came Ronald Jorgensen and another mate of his, and we got probably about three or four metres apart, and he looked up and spotted me, and I was about to say hi, Ron, and he bolted, and his mate stood there looking around for him, and I just said to him, are you looking for Ronald Jorgerson? And he must have sensed there was something up, and he bolted too. If Ron Jorgensen did go to Western Australia to reinvent himself, there should be some trace of his living there and locals who'd recognise his face and personality. We've hired Peter Frampton, a private investigator based in Perth, to make inquiries. We set about uh, checking the records that were available to us in the form of electoral roll records, um, database searches electronically and also what we have uh, available to us in-house. Not surprisingly, there's no sign of Ron on any official records but our private investigator still hopes he can find leads. In view of his colourful past, he may well have elected to come to WA and operate under uh, one or more um, pseudonyms, and that may still be the case. There were reports in Perth that someone fitting Ron's description had a stall selling art in the now abandoned Subiaco Pavilion market. In 2003, a television news team even went to the market in search of Jorgensen. You recognise him at all? Can't say that I've seen the person before. Don't I don't. Recognize I don't recognise him. No. We're looking for this chap here. I think he might have been in the markets about 16 years ago. Okay, it's a long time ago now. And you're absolutely sure that you recognise this man here? Yep. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's Ronald. Okay. Is that the name he went under? Yep. Yep. And he was a painter. When we contacted Tracy, she was reluctant to offer any more information other than suggesting that Ron may have died in 2001, aged 69. When we asked if she'd appear for an interview, she became evasive and told us she no longer works at the markets. Perhaps the story of Ron's death was simply a ruse to help him cover his tracks. Could there be others from the market who remember Ron? When the Subiaco Pavilion market closed down, a handful of stallholders moved to the Station Street markets nearby. It's possible someone there may recognise our missing man. In case they too are shy of the camera, Peter's making it a little less obvious. The market is full of people on a Saturday, and it didn't take Peter long to find someone who said they knew Ron. Yeah, I, I remember him, definitely, I remember him, definitely. Yeah. Believe me, even I know how he likes his coffee, always he comes to me for a cup of coffee, 100%. Ah. He, he was a good bloke, so he didn't really talk very much to people, you know, he used to come and have, a, have a something and just go back to his place. 
when do you think it was the last time you saw him, roughly? I, I believe over past six years over. Yeah. Well, what did you know him as, Ron? I think so. Yeah. 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 You, you don't remember the, the name Jorgensen? Does that ring a bell? No. no. The most important for me, he was a nice guy. I don't know anything yeah. more than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Two stall holders are adamant they recognise Ron. But how long ago did they last see him? Well, I came here seven years ago. That's when he was here, I think. And after a year or a year and a half, two years after I was here, I think he left. The positive sightings mean there is a strong possibility that Jorgensen is alive and living in Western Australia. We did hear that he had gone up the coast somewhere, possibly even to Broome. Uh, there are various people of uh, the artistic world that do go up the coast, and Broome is one of those places. I'd like to think there's still a chance of him being out there um, in Western Australia somewhere and that he'll, the word will filter back to him that, uh, you know, we, we want to talk to him and uh, he'll come forward. Leaving the market, we met one final witness, a regular for many years. After only seeing our photos of Ron and with no prompting, Dorothea was happy to tell us about the man she immediately recognised. Ron, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think he's um, had a girlfriend or something, but uh, he moves around, so nobody is a smart one, that one. So he had been his 80s, I think, good 80s. It wasn't my cup of tea. Look at him, yeah. Oh, he's a woman lover. Is he in jail yet? <laughs> it seems almost certain that Ron Jorgensen, notorious gangster, convicted double murderer and celebrity artist, decided to voluntarily disappear in December 1984. He staged a car accident to look like he'd died before fleeing. And there is strong evidence that he's been living anonymously in Western Australia. He may still be walking the streets of Perth at 78 years old, determined to remain one of the missing. He was colourful. If he sat down here, he would, he would have you um, in stitches. You know, he, he could certainly spin a good story, a good storyteller. I'd just love to say hello and shake his hand and give him a hug and, and um, thank you for the memories and the experience of knowing you. It would be nice. He uh, would have loved to have got out of there and disappeared completely and been the mystery man and create the legend that he is. If he's alive today, he'll be loving it. <laughs>